The fire and explosions that took place following the Ukrainian kamikaze drone attack on the oil base in Russia's Rostov region on August 18 continue for the fifth day. Firefighters involved in the area said that successive explosions are increased, adding that their lives were in danger. As can be seen from the footage spread on Telegram channels, firefighters are trying to leave the area and escape. The firefighters believe that their colleagues near the fire are dead. It should be noted that the fire, which has been going on for five days, covers an area of more than 10,000 square meters. A large number of fuel tanks have burned. A firefighting train and aviation are involved in extinguishing the fire. The Ukrainian military operation in Russia's Kursk region and the forced evacuation of thousands of Russians could seriously test Putin's authority. Pro-Kremlin military bloggers have criticized the Russian Defense Ministry and at least one oligarch, Oleg Deripaska, has already publicly condemned the war, American researcher of Soviet and Russian history Amy Knight wrote in a column for the Wall Street Journal. The author recalled how Deripaska criticized the Kremlin's defense spending, called the war in Ukraine insane and called for an immediate unconditional ceasefire. According to Knight, these comments caused a stir on Russian social media. He probably wouldn't have spoken so frankly if other representatives of the business and political elite hadn't agreed with him. As political scientist Abbas Galiamov noted, Deripaska is a very analytical person, so before saying such things, he always absorbs the mood of other elites. This is not only Deripaska's voice, the author reported. She suggested that Putin's assistant, Nikolai Patrushev, could also be among this elite. Ordinary Russians fed a constant stream of propaganda about protection from the evil West are unlikely to protest. But Putin's elite support, which is essential to his continued rule, is less clear. He should not assume that they will forever support a war with no end in sight, Knight concluded. Putin has given his troops just over a month to push Ukrainian armed forces out of the captured territories of the Kursk region. As RBC Ukraine reports, citing a source in the military political leadership, the occupation forces received instructions from Putin to liberate the Kursk region by October the 1st. It is noted that their task is to do this without removing forces from key areas where Russia is conducting an offensive in Donbass, primarily in the Pokrovsk and Toretsk directions. In fact, the Russians are now trying to send a mix of units to the Kursk region from all directions on the front, except for Pokrovsky and Toretsky. But armed forces of Ukraine expanded their control in the Kursk region and continued to advance. 
After weeks of operations in the Kursk region, Russia has managed to slow down somewhat but not halt Ukraine's advance. Despite measured statements from official spokespeople and officials, the immediate objectives of Ukrainian units in the Kursk region have become clearer over the past week. The main intrigue remains whether the next phase of this operation will take place and what its strategic goal will be as the further moves of both sides will determine the development of events along the entire front.